Welcome to the Law School Insider, where we have conversations with students, lawyers, and employers. Succeeding in law school is something that you must prepare for, not only before you begin, but throughout your law school journey, and that's what this podcast is all about. I am your host, Dr. Christopher Lewis, and I will draw from my over 20 years of experience in the college admission field, as well as bring forth the experiences of others as we delve deeper into the issues. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Law School Insider. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Lewis, and I'm so excited to have you back again this week. This week, we're talking about using your JD in a little bit different way. I mean, as I've said in the past, you you may not use your JD degree going into the courtroom per se, but you may use it to broaden your opportunities to be able to open up other doors and be able to use it for different career paths. And to this week, we have Romando Nash, and Romando it serves as the Associate Vice President for Student Services at San Jose State University. And I had the pleasure of being able to work with Romando on a task force that we are both on for the National Association of Student Personnel Administrators, and seeing the experiences that he has had and how he is using his JD degree, I wanted to be able to have him on to be able to talk about not only his experiences and how he uses his JD, but also the experiences that led him into getting the degree itself and what he learned through that process. So, Romando, thanks so much for joining us this week. Thank you for having me. This show is all about law school success, and we love having people that are using their JDs in different ways and and definitely being able to use a JD in student affairs and working in higher education is a different way of looking at how to use the JD. So let's go back in time a little bit and talk about the journey. What was it about the study of law that intrigued you? And what was it that drew you into wanting to apply to law school and go through the law school process? Sure. You know, for me, it was pretty easy and pretty clear. I've always told folks from the age of three, I wanted to be an attorney. And ironically for me, I would watch my mom uh, watch the show on TV, actually called Perry Mason. You know, so an old school attorney. And I would watch how she would kind of admire him and watch him deal with the cases and those sorts of pieces. And, that, and that's what... That's what piqued my interest in terms of law. But then I was always that kid that was reading or that was either settling differences or negotiating things or or applying logic to circumstances as well. And one of the first autobiographies that I read when I was younger was the autobiography of Thurgood Marshall, who already at that time was a Supreme Court justice. And so I read his biography and then began to kind of engulf myself with, with a little bit of everything else. And so I had always said from a very young age that that I was going to be attorney, you know, and so from reading to majoring in history and political science and minoring in sociology, that was my path. That was what I was going to do. That was just how it was going to work out. So you decided to go to law school, decided to go on that path, but you decided not to go into, let's say, a traditional JD path, going into the courtroom and working in that type of atmosphere. What led you into working in higher education and in specifically in student affairs? Sure. You know, I, I tell folks that I, I kind of backed into it, right? And so as I was going through law school, there's a couple things that happened. So I, I'm a first generation student. And so for me, everything was kind of trial and error. You know, you're, you're always a first generation individual. And so everything for me was trial and error. As I was doing trial and error, you know, I, I quickly realized that there were only, only a few things that there was a lot of things about the law that interest me, but only a few things that I became over overly passionate about it is what I would say. And, and a lot of that dealt back going back to, to my neighborhood and my history and my past and began to really focus around this kind of juvenile delinquency so, sort of piece and sort of notion as I figured I could I could help um, old friends or, or old folks from the neighborhood in terms of their peace. As I was going through law school, though, and, and you know, they, the first year they do what they do, the second year they do what they do, the third year you're, you're ready to really get out. But I happened to become a graduate hall director to help me pay for living expenses and for food as well. And, you know, that's probably what helped me get through my last year of law school because I, I was ready to be done. I was doing well. And for the most part, th- things were still very interesting to me, but I was definitely ready to be done. And this gave me an, an outlet where I was able to live on campus and interact with the undergrads who I didn't have a chance to interact with 
all that frequently when I was not living on campus and really helped kind of give me some direction. As I was getting ready to graduate, though, you know, and I, I was young when I went to college. So I was only 17 when I went to college and then was uh, was young then when I started law school and was one of the if not the youngest, maybe the second youngest in, in law school. And as I was being recruited by a few different firms, I went to this one firm in a three-story building, but their law library was in the basement of their building. And this wasn't a, a 2016 basement. This was a late 90s style basement. So a little dark, a little dreary, some cobwebs, bad lighting. And, and I'm, I'm walking through and I'm thinking how young I am and, and I'm thinking, hmm, a lot of hours in the basement with no windows. And I decided that I, I wasn't ready to practice at that time. By virtue of being a, a graduate hall director, that had given me kind of a platform where the institution that I was at, we had an, an opening up for a full-time hall director. Um, and you know, I had a mentor that encouraged me to apply, and so I, I threw my name in the hat. I think they took a chance on someone with a non-traditional background. I took a chance, you know, I would say, of coming out of law school on folks that, you know, I thought there was a, a little bit of craziness there still with them. But at the end of the day, it, it worked its way out. They then kept giving me raises and more responsibilities and moving me around and, and giving me opportunities to do things that I don't think the typical kind of first year, second year hall director has the opportunities to do. And, and that that then is what kept me included. And I'll never forget, I was probably two weeks into the position and having a conversation with the director and, and my mentor and there, hey, you know, you have your JD already. That means you can probably be a director for, for housing and residence life within like five years or so. And I was like, slow down. I'm not going to be doing this for that long. I think that tends to be the path for a lot, many people in the, in regards to not o always knowing if they're going to be staying in that unless they plan on it. But I appreciate you sharing that story. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the transferable skills because sometimes people feel that they have to be doing something that they think that a JD would be doing. So that Perry Mason, you watch Perry Mason, you think you're going to be in a courtroom and I'm sure that there are some transferables in regards to how you read things and how you did things in course. But I'm, I'm also, I also always tell students that the JD degree opens yourself up for looking at the world in different ways. How is it on a daily basis that you feel that you still are taking advantage of the knowledge and the training that you had in law school, even though you're not in a courtroom? I utilize my JD and my thought process and my analysis aspects and my ability to do research on a, on a daily basis. I tell myself or I tell my colleagues all the time, I, I call myself kind of an outsider in, in what a lot of folks would c consider to be an insider profession. Um, and I think it's the JD piece that really allows me to be a successful outsider in, in what I consider to be an insider perspective. You know, as I meet people or, or I participate in committee work or those sorts of pieces, you know, I don't have that traditional sort of background. You know, for good or bad, I automatically have or am given respect in terms of having a, a JD. I mean, folks know that having that JD gives me the means and the training to think about things just differently and to analyze things differently and, and to approach things from a different sort of perspective. They also know that, that chances are I'm going to be a good writer. You know, attorneys have to be good writers at the end of the day. And those are the things that, you know, my legal analysis and writing and research class, I still use the principles that they taught me in that class anytime that I have to write a new proposal or a grant or or whatever it may be. And so I can easily say that I wouldn't be where I am today and, and involved in the things that I'm involved in without the skill set, the analytical pieces and the logic pieces that law school talked and helped me develop. Well, that's a great perspective. I really appreciate that as well, because I think that you are right, that law students are definitely pushed to be as strong of writers as possible. The students that come in that are, are not strong writers definitely have challenges and they have to push themselves and have to get assistance along the way. As you think back at your law school experience, the things that you did or things that you didn't do, are there things now that you wish that you would have done, accomplished, examined further that you didn't do 
that would have helped you define success in what you're doing today? You know, when I think back on law school for me, I was in law school during a very intriguing time in a very interesting area. So I came through the, the large scale intellectual property sort of dynamic in the midst of Silicon Valley. So, you know, for me, it was an intriguing sort of experience as I think back on it. And, and I think for myself, it was a time frame where that wasn't what I was about. You know, I wasn't about figuring out the quickest way to earn a buck or figuring out the quickest way to, to run the stock market or those sorts of pieces. The one thing that I think I do regret as I think about school now is I really should have participated or decided when I was offered the opportunity to do our, our joint JD MBA program. As I think about school right now, and I think about where higher education is going and, and even just the, the country is going. I think in, having a, an MBA with a JD is is the way that, that I wished I would have gone as I was back in law school. You know, the ability to, to do both programs and be finished in four years would have been a phenomenal opportunity for me and, and would have saved me the, my thought process now in terms of should I go back and, and get an MBA. I think about also... You know, as I think about the classes, con law and con law two and property and crim law and those sorts of pieces, sometimes I do wonder if I should have went the trial attorney route as well and, and whether I would be good or not. Still like to argue and still appreciate having a good debate about something as long as folks are bringing the facts. But outside of that JD MBA kind of joint program piece, you know, I tried to take as, as much advantage of, of what I could as I could when I was in law school. So I don't necessarily know that I have many regrets at all. Well, that's a good place to be because yeah, that's the way that anybody that goes through law school or through really any type of higher education wants to be is that you have no regrets. And then as you move forward in your career, you keep living without those regrets too because you want to keep moving forward. Now, as you move forward, you move past law school into your professional career. Have you found that there are any specific traits, skills, or resources that you drew upon that helped you to find the success in your career that other law school students should be considering as they're going through or that sh they should be looking to develop or work on as they move into their professional career? I mentioned one of them, and that's the writing piece, right? To continually work on your writing, whether you're a writer that needs a little bit more help or whether you're uh, already consider yourself to be a, a great writer, you always want to work on your writing. You always want to make sure that, that you're practicing that no matter what it is that you decide to do. If you're practicing law, make sure that you're writing and thinking through that process. If you decide not to practice, make sure that you're figuring out the ability to write and, and to continue to move things forward. The critical thinking skills, I think, becomes the key sort of piece. You know, law school teaches individuals to think and to approach things from a very critical lens while also making sure that they're using case law in terms of processing or using case law in terms of this is where we think a decision may, may go towards type of pieces. That's a critical sort of piece, no matter what it is that you decide to apply yourself to do. And that's something that, that not a lot of people are trained to do. That ability to research and to discern through opinions and, and to look at concurring notions and majority opinions and those sorts of pieces, that, that analytical, critical thinking sort of piece would be something that I would encourage folks to, to take the time to really develop and really think through and really listen to your professors and have your professors challenge you around that thinking kind of kind of skill set sort of piece. Never underestimate, I think I would say, the relationships that you will build while you're in law school. While I'm one of the, the few, or actually there's probably a group of us that, that distinctly decided not to practice, we are still in touch with a lot of the individuals from our cohort and from our class as they continue to, to go through their careers. And that that's a relationship. There's not a lot of folks who can make it through law school. And so those, those relationships that you build as you're in the trenches, I think, becomes very key to, to the success that you may have as you continue to move forward in terms of whatever it is you decide to do. Very valuable advice. I really appreciate you sharing that. And I appreciate you being with us today because I know that everything that you've been sharing will help others to be able to find success as you have found success in your own career. So thanks so much for joining us this week and I look forward to keeping in touch with you in the future. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Hopefully my, my insight will be insightful for, for your listener. Well, that was another great guest this week on the Law School Insider. If you have an interest in being a guest on the show, drop me an email 
and Law School Insider at Cooley, C-O-O-L-E-Y dot E-D-U. And thank you all for listening today. And remember, you have the ability and right to take control of your law school's success. I hope you'll continue listening, creating a plan for success that will prepare you to achieve the dreams that you have set for yourself. Talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. You're on your way to being a law school insider. Please subscribe to stay connected and come back again next time as we speak to more students, lawyers, and employers. Thank you.